Meet Pete. Pete doesn't know it yet, but in three hours and 41 minutes at 7.43 a.m., he will be rushing his pregnant wife, Abby, to the hospital. He won't be thinking about whether his car is charged and able to safely cover the distance from here to there. Because the engineers who designed and built Pete's car already thought all about it. SAE International assembled a team of engineers from all over the world to think systematically about the charging of Pete's car. These engineers developed a series of standards that made mass production of Pete's car safe, affordable, and environmentally sustainable. But Pete won't have to think about any of that. He's probably never even heard of us. And we're fine with that. Because in helping the engineers keep Pete's car fully charged and safe, we've done our job. Sleep well, Pete. Hancock, and uh, welcome everyone to the Formula SAE Kingpin Access Overview uh, session. Thanks for joining us, and a big thanks to both the Detroit SAE section and the Carolina SAE section for hosting this. Um, as I said, I'm Daryl Hancock. I'll be the moderator today. Uh, just a little bit of background about me. I'm a senior technical specialist in vehicle dynamics at Stellantis. I've been a SAE member for 42 years going back to when I was a uh, freshman in college and competed in the uh, Baja SAE uh, competition. I've, uh, over the years, I have some experience in both IndyCar and IMSA GTP racing. So even though I've never uh, been on a Formula SAE team, I think I have some valuable background. Uh, before we start, a couple of things. Um, everyone is gonna be muted when they join the, uh, the meeting with their cameras off to save bandwidth. Um, you can use the chat function in the Zoom meeting to ask any questions that you may have. Um, you can start anytime. I'll try to take your questions. Uh, I may answer them on my own or I may uh, ask Tim to stop and answer them or uh, depending on the extent of the question, we may wait until the discussion at the end of the, uh, at the presentation. So this presentation is being recorded um, and it'll be posted to the uh, SAE Detroit section YouTube channel at some point, uh, may take a couple weeks to edit it and get it up there. So today we're gonna hear from Tim Drotar. He's a uh, lead engineer in advanced vehicle dynamics here at Stellantis. Um, and he's gonna talk about how all the forces and moments at the tire contact patch and at the wheel center uh, work through the kingpin axis to generate uh, force in the steering rack and, and back up into the steering wheel. So again, if you have any questions, uh, please post them in the chat and we'll, we'll do our best to answer those. So good day, Tim. Thanks for being here and uh, I will turn it over to you. All right, thank you, Daryl. I'm gonna share my screen. All right, and I'm gonna minimize this. Okay. Uh, Good afternoon, or uh, I guess it's still morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Tim Drotar, and uh, yeah, today's discussion is going to be about uh, the kingpin axis. All right. Uh, just a little bit uh, about me. Um, as as Daryl mentioned, I'm currently a lead engineer in the Advanced Vehicle Dynamics uh, Group at Stellantis. Uh, I joined in September. Uh, prior to that, I had Spent 30 years at Ford Motor Company, um, where I worked in, in chassis systems and, and vehicle dynamics uh, for pasture cars and light trucks. Um, I've been a member of SAE for 30 years, uh, back from my days at, uh, at Lawrence Technological University. Um, also a member of SCCA and, uh, and the Tire Society. And so I have a, a BS in mechanical engineering from, from Lawrence Technological University. and. Uh, uh, Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering from University of Michigan Dearborn. Um, I also uh, I teach a couple classes for uh, Society of Automotive Engineers uh, Professional Development. So one of them is uh, Advanced Vehicle Dynamics for for passenger cars and light trucks, um, and the other one is uh, is Fundamentals of Steering Systems. The the, the Fundamentals of Steering Systems is is uh, everything about steering from the road wheel to the steering wheel 
um, including uh, power, the topic of power assist, which is not, uh, you know, pertinent to the to, uh, discussions of a of Formula SAE cars. But, but nonetheless, the material that um, we're going to, I'm going to show you today is uh, is kind of an excerpt uh, from that three day fundamentals and steering systems course. Um, I apologize in advance because the the examples are uh, that we'll we'll go through are related to passenger cars, um, but the physics still, you know, physics uh, still apply to a, a Formula SAE car. It's just the numbers are going to be a little bit different. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so hopefully, um, you know, we, the, through the course of, of today's uh, discussion, we're going to, you know, go over some learning objecti objectives, uh, going to give you some references. Uh, uh, books and and papers and so forth that are uh, are useful uh, to uh, to uh, in your analysis of the uh, of the steering system specifically to the, the kingpin axis. Um, we're going to go uh, you know take a look at how we define the kingpin axis, you know what it is and, and how we can determine the kingpin axis uh, in our uh, in our vehicle. Uh, going to go over a review of uh, parameters associated with the kingpin axis and and some of these will may sound familiar um Daryl had presented uh I think last the last session um was uh, on the topic of alignment and uh, so a lot of the uh, per kingpin axis parameters Daryl had had covered uh, things like caster angle kingpin angle uh, kingpin offset scrub radius and so forth so um they may you know may sound familiar to you. Uh, if not, um, don't worry. You know we'll we'll go over them in sufficient detail. Um, a, a large part of the presentation today is is going to be um, looking at the uh, components of force that are, that make up the kingpin moment. And so, but when we say kingpin moment, it's it's uh, the the torque or the moment. Uh, about the kingpin axis that is going to be due to, you know, forces and moments uh, that are being generated in the ground plane or or at the wheel center. And, and we'll go over that, like I said, in, in great detail. Um, we're going to calculate um, what we call the axle kingpin moment, which would be the sum of the left and right kingpin moments. And then we'll, we'll go give you one um, way to convert that kingpin moment to a uh, to a steering wheel torque. So um, for those of you, you know, F F F F S A E uh, participants, uh, during your, your the tuning of your car or, or your development or at events, you may have, have heard the drivers say, hey, you know, I the, the steering torque is too high or, um, you know, it, it takes too much effort to hold in the turn. Or conversely, they may say, you know, I, I'm not getting any torque feedback. I don't know where the car is. Um, and that's all related. That amount of torque at the steering wheel is all related to the, the forces at the in the ground plane um, and how they create and, and generate that, that kingpin moment. Um, so again, we'll, we'll look at one way to calculate or to convert that kingpin moment uh, to the, the steering wheel torque. And uh, lastly, we, you know, we'll, we'll just show how um, the kingpin axis and kingpin axis parameters fit in, in this thing we call the systems engineering B. Um, and then, uh, and then, like I said, then we'll summarize, uh, and hopefully, then, then some Q and A uh, afterwards. So, hopefully, at the end of this presentation, um, you should be able to, you know, identify the kingpin axis for. Uh, different su suspension types uh, commonly found on passenger cars and, and trucks. Um, you'll also, one of the types uh, uh, that we'll go over is, is a, an SLA type of suspension, um, which is commonly found on a, an FSAE, uh, you know, front suspension. So um, we're going to cover, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll capture uh, the car, the suspension geometries and, and steering that, that you guys are uh, familiar with. We're going to define, hopefully you'll be able to define some of those key parameters that relate um, the location of the kingpin axis relative to the wheel center and the contact patch, and then uh, be able to calculate the moment about the kingpin axis 
uh, due to forces and moments uh, at the wheel center and the contact patch. And lastly, you know, estimate the, the steering wheel torque um, required to counteract that that kingpin moment. Um, and like I said, keep the you know keep the vehicle in a state of equilibrium in a turn. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So the the notes. Uh, described here that we're going to go over, they're, they're created from uh, several sources. The one primary source is uh, Gillespie's Fundamentals of Vehicle Dynamics book. And um, like I said, the, the equations for that we'll go over for determining the kingpin moment um, as a function of uh, the, the planar forces um, at the contact patch or, or the wheel center, um, they're like pretty much 99% straight out of Gillespie. <laughs> so, um, and uh, just to exp expand it a little bit to capture um, uh, some of the, uh, to capture left and right uh, wheels. Gillespie, his equations are developed uh, strictly for looking at a single corner. But uh, as we know, we, we uh, you know, there's, there's two sides to the, to the axle. And so we wanna be able to calculate these kingpin moments on, on both the left and right um, wheel. A um, couple other, you know, other books that are really good uh, that talk about uh, kingpin geometry, uh, the Rempel and Stoll book, uh, Automotive Chassis Pr Principles. And then in the uh, the steering handbook uh, from uh, Haar and Pfeffer is uh, is a really good one as well. Um, not only from for kingpin geometry, but for, um, just overall steering in general. And then lastly, uh, you know, vehicle dynamics terminology, the, the SAE standard J670, because one of the things we want to make sure is that um, we're, we're familiar with the terminology and we're using the correct uh, terminology when describing some of these parameters um, so that is not to, uh, not to cause any confusion. Okay. All right. So, the uh, the kingpin axis. So we refer to the kingpin axis. We sometimes you'll you'll hear it, uh, it referred to as a, as the steering axis. Um, but basically, it's it's a three dimensional uh, elasto kinematic axis about uh, which the real wheel rotates. And so um, we'll get to uh, the the three dimensional and elasto uh, in a minute. But uh, but in the old days. You know the the kingpin was was actually a pin, right? It was a it was a pin that connected the spindle uh, to the axle, and it was the uh, pivot about which the and it still is the pivot about which the uh, the spindle rotates relative to the uh, the axle. Uh, nowadays, you know, the, our our kingpin axis is uh, it. it for you know suspension for suspensions and passenger cars and light trucks, um, it's a uh, it's a virtual axis. Um, so for example, for an SLA front suspension, SLA standing standing for short long arm, um, you have uh, it shown here. You know two uh, control arms, an upper control arm uh, and a lower control arm, and it's called an SLA because. Typically, the upper control arm has a has a shorter uh, length than the uh, than the lower control arm. Right. So the uh, as the wheel moves up, you know, into jouncy, the upper control arm swings on a smaller arc than the lower control arm. So the top of the tire tips in, and and you'll get negative camber and, and so forth. Um, down in the the bottom left is a uh, a picture this is a uh, a an, an short long arm uh, what we call a tall spindle sla um this is kind of example exemplar for you know a, a passenger car or, or light truck okay the the kingpin axis for for an S sla front suspension um geometrically we can or graphically we can just draw a line uh between the upper uh upper control arm ball joint uh, and the lower control arm ball joint. And uh, I'm gonna get my little annotation here. 
between our upper control arm ball joint here and our lower control arm ball joint here, draw a line through it, then that is our, uh, that's our kingpin axis. So as you can see, it is a, it's a three-dimensional axis, right? So, and as we'll see, there, there, the, the angle that the axis makes uh, in a side view uh, is, is what we call our caster angle and the, the uh, angle that the uh, kingpin axis makes um, with the vertical in the, in the front view is our uh, kingpin inclination angle. And we'll see that in a minute. The other point, remember, I mentioned that this is an elastokinematic axis. Um, for a, a passenger car or light truck, um, typically your control arms are mounted to the body uh, by rubber bushings. So you're going to have some compliance um, in those bushings. So you can imagine as you apply a lateral force or at the contact patch or a longitudinal for, uh, lateral force during brake, uh, lateral acceleration during cornering, uh, longitudinal force during braking, um, or attractive force, if it's front wheel drive, attractive force during acceleration, uh, the forces are going to be distributed through the uh, suspension into the control arms, and you're going to get some deflection of those control arms, which is going to move the, uh, the, uh, the kingpin axis or cause a displacement of the kingpin axis. So that's why we call it a, a elastokinematic uh, axis. Now, you, you might be saying, well, we don't have any bushings in our, our formula car. You know, we have all, we have ball joints connecting the control arms or the A arms to the, to the body. Um, just remember though, that, that, uh, you know, metal has, uh, has some level of compliance as well. So, um, it may not be, you know, it may not be as compliant as a rubber bushing, but, um, you know, if you push, push on that metal bracket that can, you know that attaches a control arm to the to your uh, to your chassis. Um, it's going to deflect. You know it has some finite stiffness. Okay, so just something to something to keep in mind. All right. Okay, so upper control arm. There's our lower control arm ball joint. Boom. There's our our kingpin axis. Okay. For um, not necessarily, you know, uh, 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 applicable to a Formula SAE car, but just in general, um, you know, another type of front suspension found on primarily, commonly on, on uh, front wheel drive vehicles um, is what we call a McPherson strut uh, front suspension. And so in this case, we have a lower control arm. Um, you can see the lower arm, and then we have a, a what we call it a strut assembly, which is a, a coilover damper, and um, the top, the bottom of the damper is attached to the uh, the spindle or the or the upright, you might call it, and the lower uh, or the upper part is attached to to the body, All right? And so, in order to find the kingpin axis for this. Um, we, we identify the point, you know, where the upper strut mount attaches to the body, right, our upper strut pivot. Um, we identify our lower control arm ball joint and then um, draw a line through it, and that's our, uh, our kingpin axis, okay? So again, what I'm showing you is, is it, these are, uh, you know, uh, graphical ways to determine your kingpin axis. Um, ideally, we, you know, if we know the XYZ locations of these, uh, these points, we can mathematically determine the, uh, you know, the orientation and location of the, of the kingpin axis. Okay. And actually, in some of the, if you, you, you're you using some of the, like, multi-body dynamics tools, for example, if you have an Adams model of your, your suspension, um, that's exactly what, what it's doing, mathematically determining you know, what the uh, the orientation location of the kingpin axis. And then when you exercise the suspension, say you move it, you know, to steer or you move it up into jounce down to rebound, um, you can track the orientation and location of, of that kingpin axis. So, all right. Um, yeah, lastly, kingpin axis for a, um, this is a, the kingpin axis uh, for McPherson strut with what we call a double ball joint or double uh, ball joint lower arm. So in this case, we have 
Um, we have the uh, upper strut pivot, and then we have a, a front uh, control arm, and then we have a rear control arm. And instead of having just a single ball joint, um, we have what we call a virtual ball joint, which is the uh, intersection of a line from uh, along the uh, front control arm through the front ball joint or the front pivot to the front ball joint, a line from the, the uh, rear pivot to body through the, the uh, rear ball joint. And then that gives us our, our virtual ball joint. And then we uh, connect the dots between the upper, upper and lower. And that gives us our, um, our kingpin axis. Okay. All right. So um, with regards to the parameters that are associated uh, with the kingpin axis, um, we're going to um, let's look in a, a rear view of our uh, suspension. And again, it, it doesn't matter if it's a, uh, a strut or an SLA or a, a, you know, virtual ball joint. The, uh, the parameters here um, are all going to be, are going to be applicable regardless of the uh, suspension architecture. Right. So the first one, um, we'll start at the ground. So we're looking in a rear view. We're going to uh, start at the ground. Um, is this, uh, parameter called the scrub radius, right? And so, as you can see, the scrub radius, um, according to, to SAE J670 um, definition, right, is going to be um, the intersection. We take the, we look at the kingpin axis and we project the kingpin axis down to the ground plane. And then we take the distance between the, um, where the kingpin axis intersects the ground plane and a vertical uh, through the wheel center. And that distance is, uh, is what we call the scrub radius. And that's the moment arm by which uh, longitudinal forces at the contact patch or so breaking forces um, are gonna generate a, uh, a moment about the kingpin axis. Okay, so that's scrub radius. Um, if we move up uh, the kingpin axis, if we draw a line through the wheel center or at the, at the horizontal line at the height of the wheel center, um, the distance from the wheel center to the intersection of the kingpin axis is, is what is referred to as, as the kingpin offset, okay? It's also sometimes referred to as, you know, steering axis offset, the wheel center, uh, kingpin offset, the wheel center. In this discussion, we're going to use the term, you know, kingpin offset. That is the moment arm by which longitudinal forces at the wheel center uh, create a moment about the kingpin axis. So, for example, those longitudinal forces could be, um, say, you're, you know, you're driving along and, like, this doesn't happen in Michigan, but you're driving along and you hit, one wheel hits a pothole. Okay, so that impact force is going to be um, reacted at, at the wheel center in the longitudinal or in the, in the rearward direction, and it's going to create a moment about the kingpin axis. So that's the mechanism, um, or the, that's the moment that you think about, it's, we're creating that moment about the kingpin axis, so then that moment is going to be translated to a force uh, by the steer arm, which is going to go to the rack, which is going to create a rotation of the pinion, which you're going to feel as a sudden, you know, as a sudden jerk of the, of the steering wheel, or if you're holding onto the steering wheel tight, you're going to feel, feel a buildup and torque. Okay. Um, the, the other one would be if, uh, if you had a front wheel drive car and you, you know, you, you mash the throttle, your acceleration force, your, your tractive uh, force is being generated at the wheel center in a, in a forward direction. And so, you generate that tractive force, it's going to create a moment about the kingpin axis. Now, if you are on, your car is on, you know, uh, a high mu surface, you know, you have left and right uh, wheels are um, uh, both on the same mu, you have the same, you know, uh, forces being generated at the, uh, at, at the wheel center, um, and they're both moving forward, the, the kingpin moments would cancel each other out. But say, for example, you're on split mu where, you know, the, the curbside wheels, I guess, and this would be the right wheel is on a low mu and the left wheel is on a high mu and you mash the throttle, you might feel 
um, a kind of a, a steer um, to the uh, to the right due to the uh, imbalance of kingpin moments. Okay, but the important thing here is is uh, to remember is that that you know the like I said, breaking forces are going to go through react um, through the scrub radius and uh, acceleration and impact forces are going to uh, uh, react on, on the kingpin offset. And then lastly uh, is obviously the kingpin inclination angle. And this is the, the angle that the kingpin axis makes with the, with, with the vertical. Okay. And by sign convention, it, it, it's positive when the top of the kingpin axis is, is tipped inward. Side view. Um, so again, starting starting at the ground. Um, if we look at this uh, at the kingpin axis, and and we draw a line through the upper and lower ball joint, uh, this SLA example, or or we have a McPherson strut, we draw between the the, the strut mount and the uh, lower ball joint. Um, we're interested in where the kingpin axis intersects intersects the ground, and so the distance between uh, the point where the kingpin axis intersects the ground and the, the center line of the of the wheel is what we call the the mechanical trail, or some people re refer to as as the caster trail. Uh, SAE J670 refers to it as as caster offset uh, at the ground. Um, so this is part of the total the moment arm by which lateral forces are going to create a moment uh, about the kingpin axis. Um, if we go to the next, uh, let's see, if we look at the, uh, go to the height of the wheel center and we look at the, um, the distance between the kingpin axis and the wheel center at the height of the, um, uh, uh, at the wheel center, we get this thing called the, the spindle trail or some, or SAE J70, J670 refers to as, as caster offset. Um, at the wheel center. Um, this is something a parameter that um, we sometimes use to kind of get a balance if we have a certain amount of caster angle and, a, and we're shooting for a certain amount of mechanical trail. This is one uh, tuning knob, if you will, that allows us to achieve uh, achieve that. Uh, typically for if you're on an axle, a driven axle where you have half shafts, for example, in a front wheel drive car, um, that spindle trail is going to be uh, close to zero um, because of uh, uh, if you think about what happens when we're turning, you know, if we have that spindle trail, if, if when the road wheels turn, um, if we have a spindle trail, um, it's going to cause a, a lateral displacement of the, not a, like a pure rotation of the wheel center, but a lateral displacement as well. And uh, that would affect, uh, would cause some like plunge on half shafts and stuff like that. So, um, Okay, uh, caster angle is the next one. So again, in, in a side view, this is the angle that the kingpin axis makes uh, with the uh, uh, with the vertical. And again, sign convention is is positive when the kingpin axis is tipped uh, is tipped rearward. Um, another important parameter, not related to suspension uh, geometry per se, but um, but which has an effect on the uh, the the kingpin moment, as we'll see, is this is this idea of the pneuma tire pneumatic trail, um, and what this is this is the lateral distance uh, between the uh, if you will the geometric center of the wheel and the centroid of force um, be, that it, lateral force that's being generated at 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 the contact patch. So for a um, for a free rolling tire, such as like the front front tire on a rear wheel drive vehicle, um, your lateral force is not generated at uh, the center of the of the of the geometric center of the tire or or, or tire wheel assembly. It's going to be some distance aft um, of the geometric center, and that distance is is called the uh, the pneumatic trail. So your so the 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 total what we we have is is what we call the total trail which is the sum of the um, pneumatic trail 
and the mechanical trail. So this is the, the total trail is the moment arm by which lateral forces at the contact patch, cornering forces um, are going to create a, uh, a, a moment um, at the kingpin axis. Okay. All right. So um, armed with that knowledge of the, of the, uh, the different uh, kingpin axis parameters. Now we're going to, uh, we'll take a look at, at uh, the forces and moments at the contact patch and, and uh, subsequently how to calculate a kingpin moment knowing these, uh, these uh, kingpin, uh, kingpin axis uh, parameters. So when we're, when we're driving down the road, right, and, and, and any car, it could be our passenger car, it could be our, our FSAE car, you know, we've got these multiple forces and moments um, being generated at the contact patch, right? So um, the three forces, uh, the um, the X force in the X direction is going to be, uh, we'll, we'll generically call it our, our tractive force, right? Um, in the Y direction is going to be our cornering force, and our Z direction is going to be um, obviously our vertical force, which it consists of our static weight, right? The, the, the weight on the on the tire or on the wheel as, as we're standing still, plus any load transfer we may get from four aft load transfer due, due to acceleration or, or braking or cornering, um, as well as aero forces, any you know aerodynamic downforce that's being uh, that, that's being generated that's that's being applied uh, to to the contact patch. Okay, we also have these three moments. Um, so we have uh, uh, we have what we call the tire overturning moment, right? And this is a uh, this is a characteristic of the of the tire, and due to the fact that like the 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 center of uh, vertical center of force of the uh, of the tire is not at the geometric center or the center of pressure, I guess, in the contact patch is another way of thinking, is not at the geometric center of the wheel. It's, you know, some disc is going to be, you know, some distance um, either inboard or outboard of the, uh, the geometric center. So that lateral pneumatic trail, if you will, times a vertical force gives you an overturning moment, you know, about the, uh, about the longitudinal axis. Um, Rolling resistance moment that the MY um, that's tire rolling resistance moment is is a function of many things tire rolling resistance many things um, one of them being obviously being the 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 pavement uh, the tire um, um, property uh, material property interface with the pavement um, the other thing is is again you know you've got the the fact that the um, you know that the center of force, that center of pressure, does not is not at the geometric center of the tire. So you've got the vertical force times that uh, longitudinal moment arm, um, and it's going to create a uh, a rolling resistance moment. And then the MZ um, is uh, what we call our uh, our aligning moment. And this is again, this would be the the aligning moment is going to be. The lateral force times, say, the at the tire, this is going to be the, the, the tire pneumatic trail. Okay. Okay. Hey, Tim, while we're still on the subject of tires, there was one question in the chat. Um, how does the pneumatic trail change between bias ply and radial tires? <laughs> um, I think it's going to be different. <laughs> <laughs> um you know i may be old but i'm not that old i i, I can't remember it, you know was it wasn't around back in the days of bias ply tires so um uh, that's a that's a great question i i don't know um honestly i i, I don't know um, I, I would think that it's it varies less in a bias ply tire because a, a radial tire is more compliant at the contact with the ground, but I'm not going to stand behind that statement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause it, it, that it's definitely related to the, the construction in the tire. Right. 
Um, in fact, one of the ways that we estimate the the pneumatic trail is we take if we have force and moment data for tire, um, we if you take the aligning torque stiffness divided by the cornering stiffness or the, or the lateral force stiffness, um, that gives you an estimate of the you know of the of the pneumatic trail. So great question. Um, I don't know, but I I wonder uh, perhaps um, and maybe we'll, we'll, I'll pull it up at the end. Um, there's a really good reference on tires, which is the uh, the pneumatic tire ebook. Maybe Daryl, you could put that in the, a link to that in the chat. Um, if you Google okay. the the pneumatic tire ebook, there should be a link to um, the doc the uh, the ebook that you can download no charge from uh, the NHTSA website. And uh, and that has, that's everything you want to know about tires and uh, perhaps they, they have something, uh, there, there's something in there. Um, okay. Okay, all right. Um, so, so when we're talking about the kingpin moment, you know, the, the total moment, we can, um, if we know the, the, the geometry of the suspension or the geometry of the, of the in, in these uh, parameters associated with the kingpin axis, um, for given forces and moments being applied at the, either the wheel center or the ground plane, um, we can calculate the, uh, individual moments about the kingpin axis due to um, these these uh, applied forces and moments, um, and that would give us um, we sum them all up, and and we get a total moment about the kingpin axis. So um, so for example, so as we're driving, you know, driving down the road, and say we're we're going into you know we're in a corner. And we, or we're on our, let's make it appropriate to FSAE. We're on the autocross and we're, you know, driving straight down the road on a, a straight section and we're coming into a, 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 you know, fairly tight curve. So we, you know, apply the brakes. So we generate longitudinal force and then we start to turn and we're generating lateral force and aligning moment. Um, the, uh, the vertical force is changing because, uh, you know, because of the reduction in arrow and, and the lateral load transfer. Um, so we can calculate for, if we, if we have an estimate of those forces, um, we can calculate, you know, what that, what that kingpin moment um, is going to be. And you say, well, how, how can you get the forces? Well, um, force equals, you know, force equals MA. Right, so for the for the lateral and, and, and longitudinal, uh, for the vertical, we could go back to our uh, fundamentals of vehicle dynamics, uh, Gillespie, and uh, you know pull out the equation for uh, uh, vertical load transfer as a function of of, of roll angle, and uh, and 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 get some uh, you know first approximations for for the forces that are being generated. You know, like I said, as a function of uh, of uh, of the vehicle state. So let's take a, a snapshot in time, right? So we're, we're on the brakes, we're in a turn, so we're generating AX and AY. To, to keep this vehicle, so we're generating a kingpin moment that is going to want to steer the, the tires or the steer the wheels out of the turn. So the driver is going to have to apply a steer input uh, to generate a equal and opposite kingpin moment, axle kingpin moment, to keep the vehicle in that in that state of equilibrium. Okay. Okay. And the amount of uh, of torque that the driver has to apply, um, it is the, 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 that kingpin moment in in a general sense for for passenger cars and, and light trucks is going to be a combination of you know, the torque requ requ uh, requested of the driver, steering wheel torque requested of the driver, and some assist force coming from the uh, from the power steering system. Now, in our case, for, for Formula SAE cars, because we don't have power steering, um, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be strictly a, a function of, you know, you know, how much torque the driver is going to be able to, uh, is, is going to have to generate. Okay. Got it. 
So, so if we think about this, the kingpin moment, again, so, so this is a, uh, in this picture here, we show a, you know, a, a steering and suspension system. This is again from a, a passenger car, but the, um, you know, the physics are the same for a, a Formula SAE car, right? Um, we're generating, you know, if, as we're cornering or combined, say, braking and cornering or acceleration and cornering, you know, there's kingpin, like I said, there's kingpin moments um, being generated from the road forces that's going to want to generate, want to uh, straighten the wheels out. It's going to want to, you know, uh, turn the wheels out of the turn. Um, we have to apply a, you know, whatever uh, torque is required to the steering wheel plus in a, in a general, you know, case power assist. Uh, to create a kingpin moment, um, generate a kingpin moment that's equal in magnitude, opposite in direction uh, from what's being generated from the road uh, to keep the vehicle in a in a in a state of equilibrium. All right. Okay. So again, um, so again, these these kingpin moment equations that we're going to uh, talk about here, I, I didn't make them up. You know, Gillespie did all the. Uh, all the hard work and I'm reaping the, the benefits of his hard work. Um, so if you look at, uh, at the fundamentals of vehicle dynamics, chapter eight, um, he goes into great detail about, um, you know, in, in discussion about the different, uh, uh, the individual kingpin, um, moment, uh, components. Um, yeah. So one of the things that, that Gillespie, so Gillespie calculates the moment about a vertical axis through the through the wheel center, um, and so like so a pure vertical. What I've done here is it was kind of expanded on it to actually, uh, and you'll see there's a bunch of trig in here <laughs> to to take that vertical moment and uh, project it onto the kingpin axis, so you get a true. Um, a true kingpin moment. So like I said, the if you go to Gillespie, um, the equations are going to be similar, but um, you know, you're going to see these additional sines and cosines there uh, in, in these equations uh, to reflect the, uh, the projection of the moment, uh, vertical moment onto the, to the kingpin axis. Okay. So uh, without further ado, uh, if we look at uh, braking forces at the contact patch, so we can calculate the moment about the kingpin axis. So this is the, the we've, uh, uh, in the, the pictures here, we have uh, the right and left front suspension. It's an ISO sign convention, positive X is forward, positive Y is to the left, positive Z is, uh, is up. So um, if we know the, longitudinal force at the contact patch, the braking force, um, that braking force times the scrub radius here is going to create a vertical, a, a, uh, a moment uh, about the vertical axis. And then if we take the cosine of the, of the kingpin inclination angle, here we project that, um, that moment onto the kingpin axis. The other thing is that, um, this, we have these terms here that uh, that capture this cosine of, of, of delta, delta being the uh, road wheel steer angle. Um, so you can see when the, the vehicle is straight ahead, when the wheel is pointed straight ahead, this delta, uh, the angle or road wheel angle is zero, cosine of zero is one. So this moment is going to be a, a maxima, right? And then as we turn, as you turn further and further, the road wheel further and further, um, this uh, kingpin moment due to the longitudinal force is going to uh, is going to go down, okay, by the cosine of of the increasing uh, road wheel steer angle, okay. So again, if we if we calculate, you know, forces at the left, force at the right, um, we can get a total axle uh, axle kingpin moment, the sum of the left and right. If everything is so, if we're for example, if we're breaking on symmetric you know, we, everything is symmetric. The the left and right, you know, we're, we're high mu. Both on tires are on a high mu. 
The scrub radius on both sides are exactly the same. The force being applied at the contact patch is exactly the same. You'll see that the left and right will cancel out, and so our kingpin moment will, will be zero. So what that means to the driver is that they're under straight line braking, right? So theoretically, they will not have to apply any torque to the steering wheel to keep to create a kingpin moment to counteract um, any kingpin moment that's going to want to cut the car cause the car to drift uh, under braking. Right? <sighs> so this illustrates the importance of having in our FSAE cars of making sure that you know we've got. Uh, we pay attention to our tolerances and our, our in our build so that we have the you know the same um, say the, the same kingpin inclination angle on the left and on, and on the right. Okay. All right, that's breaking. Um, not again. Not pertinent to. Um, not pertinent to uh, FSAE cars, rear wheel drive cars, but but just. For completeness, you know, the you we can also generate a uh, axle kingpin moment from traction tractive forces at, at the wheel center. And so this could be the case of a front wheel drive car um, <laughs> where you, you you mash on the throttle, you generate a longitudinal force at the at the uh, at the wheel center, um, and that times the kingpin offset is going to generate a moment about the kingpin axis, and then or, uh, generate a moment about a vertical axis. And again, this cosine of, of lambda is, is going to project that onto the kingpin axis. Um, another example will this this would be useful is, is if you're looking at regenerative braking. Because regenerative braking, the, the braking force is applied at the wheel center as well. But in this case, it would be in a, in a negative uh, x direction. So if you wanted to calculate like kingpin moment under regen, um, you could use this, this equation as well. Um, lateral force at the contact patch. And so what we're going to do here is um, we're going to do, we're going to consider, in this case, we're going to say, okay, this is the lateral force is uh, generated, you know, is being generated at the geometric center of the wheel. And, and, and I know I said it, it's not because it's, it's really being, it's, it's going to be at some distance called the pneumatic trail um, you know behind the wheel center but we're going to treat we're going to um, separate in this case in this analysis or these equations we're going to separate out the, the effect of of the, the lateral force from the aligning moment so we'll, we'll as we'll see um, we'll we'll uh, when we get to the aligning moment equation it'll be lateral force times um, pneumatic trail and we'll use the idea of superposition because we're superimposing all of these uh, all of these responses. But for for a pure lateral force um, at the contact patch, it's the uh, the lateral force times, in this case, the me mechanical trail, which creates a moment uh, you know about the z-axis. The and then again now by taking the cosine of the caster angle, we project it onto the kingpin axis to get a a moment uh, about about the kingpin axis, and you could see that by sign convention, uh, the left and the right are going in in the same direction. So, um, if we were to take a bicycle model approach, for example, of this we could replace the individual, you know, left and right with just a, a an axle F Y or the sum of the um, uh, lateral force at the left plus the lateral force at the right. And you say, how do you get how do you get the Fy, right? How do you know what the lateral force is? Force equal equals ma. If you know the, the the vertical load on the tire times the lateral acceleration that you're generating, that's your 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 lateral force, right? So in this type of analysis, you don't need, uh, you know, to have I don't need tire force a moment data. I don't, you know, all I need to know is how many G's am I pulling. And what is the weight at, at that corner? And you can calculate what the uh, you know what the uh, the moment is about the kingpin axis. Okay. This one uh, kingpin moment due to a vertical force. So this one is a, a little more involved because the um, the vertical force is going to act as you can see here. Um, it, it acts on 
the scrub radius, but there's two components. One is uh, a, a component uh, when we, in both cases, we're, we're, we're generating a, um, we're generating a moment um, about the, uh, about the x-axis, but then we're going to project it um, onto the kingpin axis um, through the uh, kingpin inclination as well as the the castor angle. And so uh, we're going to go to the next slide. We're we're going to kind of break this up into two parts. So that so the first term, you know, considering the first term, right? So we've got the We've got the vertical force FZ um, and then sign of the uh, kingpin inclination angle. And so here's our, you know, we, we've got our, our scrub radius here, uh, right? And this term, this FZ sign of the uh, kingpin inclination angle, this is the component of the vertical force that's perpendicular uh, to the kingpin axis um, in the YZ plane, right? And so I know it's it may be hard to to, to see from these cartoons, but um, imagine you know we're we're operating in this you know in this what we're in this YZ plane here, and this is a force um, perpendicular to the um, the kingpin axis that's operating on that. Uh, you know, on, on the scrub radius, all right? And you can see, one of the things that you can see is that um, left and right, they're, you know, opposite uh, in direction. So again, this is, this is, uh, they're, they're in the same direction, um, but they're going to be in the, the opposite direction to turn. So what this is going to do is um, this is your, your self-centering effect. So this is where, you know, when you're you're turning the wheel and um, you're getting, you know, you're getting some, uh, you're getting some, uh, the kingpin moments on the left and the right. This is is what's going to want to, uh, return the uh, component that's going to want to return the wheels uh, wheels back to the straight ahead position. Okay. As opposed to the second one, um, this one, right? The now we're operating in the in the x z plane here, right? So kind of like a the plane, if we were looking, you know, looking forward in, in or rearward in vehicle, right? And so this, uh, the force that is perpendicular to the kingpin axis times that scrub radius um, is going to create our, uh, our kingpin moment, okay? And you can see that both of these are, in the moments are in the opposite direction, right? And so when we're driving along, they, they, they tend to balance uh, each other out. So again, assuming everything is, is symmetric, we got symmetric weights on the left and right and symmetric uh, geometry. And so this one, um, what you will tend to see, this is the component by which uh, when you steer the, you know, you steer your road wheel or steering wheel, you, you tend to see the body start to lift. All right. Okay. All right. So these are the these are the two uh, two components of vertical force um, that are going to uh, uh, create a, a a kingpin moment. So we're gonna we're gonna sum both of these up and get a uh, total kingpin moment due to vertical force. All right. I'm gonna be honest with you. This one takes. Um, this one took me a, a, a little bit of rereading of Gillespie to uh, to to uh, absorb it, but uh, hopefully uh, hopefully this helps. All right. The aligning moment from uh, from the torque at the at the uh, at the contact patch, right? And so 
again, so for some aligning torque, um, assuming, you know, assuming some amount of pneumatic trail, so again, the, 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 um, the, the fact that our, uh, our lateral force, our centroid of force is not at the geometric center of the wheel, it's some distance, you know, aft of the, uh, uh, of the geometric center of, of the tire. And so we're going to generate a, uh, what we call a, uh, the aligning torque. Um, there's also something and it is what we call residual aligning torques. Um, these are uh, aligning torque in the tire that are due to uh, either in, intentional or unintentional. Um, they're either due to manufacturing variation uh, or um, uh, for passenger cars and light trucks, we put in a we typically specify a certain amount of aligning torque, um, which would be aligning torque at zero lateral force, force. And we apply it in such a way that, so that if you're driving your car on a crown road, um, it, it reduces the amount of drift that you have down the, down the cross slope. Um, it's kind of an advanced topic. And, and like I said, pr predominantly um, more applicable to, to passenger cars and light trucks, but, um, but just wanted to add that add that in as an awareness. But for our discussion, you know, the big one is going to be the the lateral force times uh, times the pneumatic trail. Okay. Uh, the last one, and again, not might be of interest to um, FSAE, especially when we're talking about size the, the sizing of components. But it, it's this idea of steering a locked tire. And so, say you're you're uh, you're, you're part, you're statically, you know, sitting static, the engine's running, um, you've got your foot on the brake, and then you try to turn the steering wheel. And if you, um, if you have a car, your car does not have power steering, you, you probably quickly realize that it takes a lot of effort to turn the steering wheel. And that's because with your foot on the brake, um, we're dragging, we're literally dragging the tire about the kingpin axis. So the, um, the moment arm is going to be the, uh, the square root of the sum of the squares or the, or the resultant of the scrub radius and the, um, and the mechanical trail. So um, we can calculate that, that kingpin moment for, for what we call static park um, as uh, you know, the force, the vertical force times some mu and, and let's just say it's one, you know, for, for, for conversation purposes. Um, and uh, you see it's, we have the scrub radius um, and the, the square root of the sum of the square of scrub radius um, times the, um, the kingpin inclination angle and the total trail times the uh, cosine of the caster trail. So that in total is going to give you um, your that times the force is going to give you the the, to, the kingpin moment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I know it's kind of it was kind of deep in 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 math, um, but these uh, these equations are, are useful and uh, and are uh, applicable to to spreadsheet engineering. So. And what we can do is we can create a, you know, take these uh, uh, equations and uh, plug them into, um, you know, Excel and, and, and do some calculations there. So, um, again, this is this example here is, is out of uh, my SAE class, my three day SAE class, you know, fundamentals of steering systems. And it's kind of been a, a so it's a it's a passenger car uh, example. But again, your you know, the physics are the same. So you could you can do the. Uh, this analysis as well. Um, so, for example, say we have a rear wheel drive sedan, it has rack and pinion steering, um, and you can see some of the parameters here, um, the front axle vertical load, um, overall steering ratio, this is, you know, how many degrees of steering wheel angle to generate average, uh, uh, steering wheel angle to generate an average of, of one degree road wheel angle. Uh, it has a relatively high pin inclination angle. It's about 14 degrees. Uh, caster angle, you know, 3.6 degrees. Um, 
scrub radius is is uh, about 12 millimeters um scrub radius one of the things you 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 know the, we we try to minimize our scrub radius as as much as possible um to um so that we're not generating well first of all we're not generating large kingpin moments under braking and and have to worry about like poles under braking in a split mew but also um for for tire wear um we typically you know you don't want the tire to be to be scrubbing as we're as we're you know turning um so like kind of a rule of thumb is you know is is no more for passenger cars at least is no more than 15 millimeters of of scrub um yeah, plus or minus 15. um mechanical the the caster trail of this particular vehicle has uh it has 25 millimeters of of mechanical trail uh the pneumatic trail for this particular tire is about 30 millimeters um that's kind of for passenger car and light truck tires that's kind of a a ballpark value reasonable value for a uh a pneumatic trail or free rolling tire um so if you add the the, the mechanical trail plus the pneumatic trail we have a, a total trail of uh of, of 55 millimeters okay okay um we're going to you know like anything we we, we probably want to have some um performance targets we probably have some performance targets for our vehicle and so at least in passenger cars we have you know we, we'll set targets for uh if you look at uh steering wheel angle versus lateral acceleration we probably want to have a responsiveness we have a responsiveness target a response gain target um if you take the the slope of this or the inverse slope of this line in in g's per degree of steering wheel angle that's commonly referred to as like the lateral acceleration gain how many g's do i do i want per per degree of steering wheel angle um we also probably have a target for steering wheel torque for, again for passenger cars um you know customer we have a, a certain amount of uh torque uh build up with lateral acceleration um so we're going to have have targets for that so let's say you know and, and again passenger car um you know we, we kind of the normal range of of handling you know linear range of handling customer handling is going to be you know up to like like a half g um the uh anything above a half g you start to get into to limit handling for passenger cars and so some of the uh, assumptions of linearity that we're going to make and, and constant values for some of these parameters and linearity just starts to break down so um we're gonna we're gonna look at this a, about uh you know half g um passenger cars we're also uh, uh, worried about you know how much torque that the driver has to to provide so we'll set a target for the torque of the steering wheel not to exceed a, a certain value so we've got these performance targets um we're going to make the following assumptions in our in our spreadsheet again we, we have symmetric front suspension geometry so kingpin inclination angle on the left is equal to the kingpin inclination angle on the right um the you know caster angle is the same left and right and and they're going to be constant okay they're not changing and in reality we know that all of these parameters change with ride height and and steer but for for this uh, uh first approximation we'll we'll assume that they're they're constant um we're driving our car on a homogeneous surface so all you know all four tires have the same mu um they're free rolling front tires so we're not applying any tractive force um um at the you know at the front uh front axle um we're going to say no residual aligning torque um again this is probably it's probably something that if you were in past doing past your cars it's something that would be important but um i think for for an fsae type car you probably not um and then the other thing is is we're going to assume that um there's you know negligible steering friction that you know every uh newton of force or or, or uh killing or um newton meter of kingpin moment is going to be transferred directly in a hundred percent efficiently to the uh to the steering wheel and and vice versa every newton meter from the steering wheel is going to go 
you know, 100% efficiently to generating a, a kingpin moment. Um, but in real world, it, it doesn't, you know, there's going to be some losses, uh, you know, some loss of efficiency due to friction in the, the racks and the ball joints and the steering column and all that stuff. Okay. All right. So now that we've set those these ground rules, um, the equations that we're, we're going to use um, are these. Uh, so we're eliminating the longitudinal. So we've got lateral force at the contact patch, vertical force at the contact patch, aligning moment, and we're going to do the, the, the static part. So the total kingpin moment um, is going to be the moment at the kingpin due to lateral force uh, plus a moment at the kingpin due to the vertical force um, plus the moment at the kingpin uh, about the kingpin due to uh, the aligning torque, and then separately we'll, ca we'll calculate the moment of the king kingpin due to uh, that static park or steering up a locked uh, tire. A um, couple other things I, I mentioned them in, in passing, but to to, to uh, show you know, road wheel angle is going to be related to the steering wheel angle by the overall ratio. I is the, the overall steering ratio. And uh, the lateral force at the contact patch, um, we can ask, we can calculate that as the weight um, times the lateral acceleration, or right, so or normal force um, at the contact patch times the, the lateral acceleration. So we so we plug these into uh, Excel, and this is my little handy dandy uh, Excel file, and we can calculate um, the the total kingpin moment. So we uh, the I'm sorry, the individual components uh, of kingpin moment. So this uh, column here, one two third in blue, is the uh, moment about the kingpin axis due to lateral force. And and at least in passenger car dynamics, we we focus on one of the we we kind of look at a lot of these metrics at three tenths of a g because three tenths of a g is uh, like related to you know cornering at, at posted highway speeds right so for example if you're you're driving on a, a on a um on a highway and you're in a in a bank curve or something you're on a curve or something like that and it says oh speed limit 50 miles an hour it's because that road was designed so that if you're driving on that curve at 50 miles an hour you're going to be generating about three tenths g lateral acceleration. Okay, so so three tenths g you'll, you'll past your car dynamics, you'll you'll kind of hear that linear range of handling. You know, it's it's a point where you know we're we're operating in linear range of the tire. Um, you know, we, we're not getting into nonlinear range of the tire. We're not getting into nonlinearities associated with the suspension, kinematics, and compliances, and so forth. So this this you know, assumption of constant, you know, things being constant and uh, and, and linear are, are, are still valid, okay? So what this tells us is that at three tenths of a G, all right, the kingpin moment due to lateral force is, is like 78, almost 79 Newton meters. And the fact by sign convention that it's opposite, it's a negative, um, tells us it's in the, opposite direction of of the steering wheel angle right and so this is again this is iso you know iso coordinate system so this one it would say hey i'm i'm applying um you know i'm steering at this is, would be you know is this is like 75 kph for example um i'm steering 21 degrees to the left but I'm generating an, a total axle kingpin moment due to lateral forces of negative 78.6. So it's trying to, to steer the car out of the turn. So the driver is going to have to, again, uh, you know, uh, as we'll see, the driver is going to have to apply a torque that is equal a mag that generates a kingpin um, moment that's equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction to keep the car in a curve, All right? So you can see that you know 78.6 newton meters due to the the fy lateral force. Um, the fz, you know, it's it's small, right? It's it's in this particular vehicle, it's 0.75. So it's like, you know, one percent. Would that be? Yeah, it'd be like like one percent of the the fy. And in and the moment due due to the kingpin, um, or I'm sorry, moment about the kingpin axis due to the lining torque. Um, you know, is 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 ninety one and a half. So the sum the the so the the 
lateral force and the aligning torque are, are kind of like the two biggest uh, contributors. The other ones are, you know, they're smaller, but they're but they're not, you know, insignificant. So, um, so we sum those up, and we've get the moment about the kingpin axis. So at three tenths of a g, the 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 the, the ground or, or the road is is generating a total kingpin moment, an estimated kingpin moment of one hundred and seventy point eight newton meters, which is in the opposite direction. So it's trying to you know steer the car out of the turn. By by comparison, if we look at you know, at rest with the foot on the brake, right? When we we try to we start turning, we try to turn the steering wheel. We got to generate you know 580. It's the the kingpin moment being generated by that that interaction with the road surface is is 587 uh, newton meters. So that's how much kingpin moment needs to be overcome before the front wheels will begin to be, begin to steer. Okay, a lot higher than, you know, a lot higher than uh, um, what we have for, for cornering. And a shameless plug for the SAE Fundamentals of Steering System class, but when we talk about power steering, this is like the reason for power steering is to minimize the amount of torque that the driver has to apply. Um, for example, when they're trying to park the car at, at zero or, or, or turn the steering wheel at, at zero or low speeds. Okay. Um, so if we plot, you know, the kingpin moment um, versus lateral acceleration on, on a graph, so you can see just visually, you can see how the, the kingpin moment changes. Uh, the red line here, this is cornering at, uh, in this case, it's 75 kph. Um, and then the, the lonely blue, you know, green dot here is the kingpin moment uh, for, for static parking. Okay. And you'll say, you may ask yourself, well, hey, why is it specific to 75 kph? Um, it's because the, depending on how fast you're going, right, the steering wheel angle and your overall steering ratio and your wheelbase and all this kind of fun stuff, um, the steering wheel angle is going to be different, right? So say if you're going faster, Ay is V squared over R, right? So say you're going faster, um, you're going to have less, uh, require less uh, steering wheel angle. And if you have, you know, less steering wheel angle, um, then, you know, some of these uh, values are going to be, um, or, the, or the amount of uh, change that you have due to road wheel angle is going to be, uh, going to be different. So, okay. All right. We're in a home stretch here. Um, so, Again, so to, so we, we, now we know what the kingpin moment is is a function of lateral acceleration. So again, like it, like I said before, you know, we if we want to keep the vehicle in a state of equilibrium, right? Uh, we want to keep it, you know, on on path in a combined cornering and braking, or or we want to keep it on on our path um, at uh, at a constant radius turn, right? We're going to have to generate the driver and. And, and power steering system, if we have one, um, they have to generate a kingpin moment that's gonna be equal in magnitude and opposite direction um, to the kingpin moment that comes from, from the road surface, okay? Um, in, a, in a general sense, so if we have a, a vehicle with power steering, like I said, that, that kingpin moment is gonna be a function of the, of the torque that the driver's applying and additional rack force um, that's generated by the power assist system. So this this general equation here shows that, you know, the moment about the kingpin axis that we have to react um, is needs to be equal and opposite um, and generated by the torque at the steering wheel uh, converted to a rack force. And we take that, we can convert that by two pi uh, times what we call the, the, the steering gear ratio, how many meters of rack travel per revolution of the pinion. Um, that plus, we take that in the, the driver generated force, add that to the power steering force, which is, is actually um, is going to be a function amount of the amount of torque that the drivers apply uh, because it's a closed loop, uh, you know, closed loop feedback system. The power steering systems are a closed loop feedback system. Um, but nonetheless, when we, we generate some amount of power steering rack force, right, and that 
rack force times what we call multiplied by the moment arm that we refer to as what we call the, the steer arm. Uh, the steer arm it, length is going to be the normal distance uh, between the kingpin axis and, and our outer tie rod ball joint. So it's the moment arm by which, you know, tie rod forces are going to generate a um, moment about the, the kingpin axis. And if we had more time, we would go into the details about, you know, the how we find the steer arm and, um, you know, how, how we determine the steer arm and then go through the calculations to get this kingpin moment. Um, and, and we'll do that, you know, again, if we, we do that in the uh, the SAE seminar, the three-day seminar, um, and we, we will do this in, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do this later um, if in the, uh, uh, okay, and the, uh, so, but, but, Fortunately, for, for to simplify things for an FSAE car, we don't have power steering. So one of the ways that we can get um, the steering torque is to simply, you know, uh, take that kingpin moment and divide it by our overall steering ratio. Uh, and again, the overall steering ratio being, you know, how many degrees of steering wheel angle to, to generate one degree of, of road wheel angle. Okay. And so going back to that um, Excel file again our our specs remember we said that you know we're going to assume our, our overall steering ratio for this particular vehicle is 14.9 uh, to 1 or about 15 to 1. Um, in reality it, it, it's not constant or it it's it changes with increasing steering wheel angle uh, due to, to, to many factors one being uh, your Ackerman steering geometry um, another one be it, it would change uh, instantaneously uh, based on your upper steering, if you had, uh, say, universal joints that weren't phased properly, you would get a sinusoidal, you know, change in, in ratio with steering wheel angles. So, um, again, we unfortunately, we don't have time to go into that, but 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 we could at a, at a later date. Okay. Um, so, going back to the uh, spreadsheet now, I, I take that equation. Um, Torque is equal to the uh, kingpin moment divided by the overall steering ratio. The, the, the reason for the negative one is because then the torque has to be equal in magnitude and in opposite direction of the kingpin moment being generated from the road forces. Um, so you can see that um, without power steering in this particular, this is a road car, right? Um, if we didn't have power steering in this, in this road car at three tenths of a G, the driver would have to apply 11 and a half newton meters of, of torque to the steering wheel to hold the car in, in, a, in a turn. Um, that's a lot. You know, typical corner holding efforts at three tenths of a G are, are, are really down around three to three to four newton meters. So the customer would really complain about this. So hence the need for, for power steering. Um, parking on center, it, it's, it's about 40 you know, almost 40 Newton meters to start to turn the steering wheel. And the customer would, would absolutely complain about this. Um, our target is more like, you know, two and a half Newton meters. So um, again, this, this shows the, uh, the need for, um, yeah, for, for uh, power steering. Okay. So, and again, this is just a, a plot showing that the steering wheel torque versus uh, lateral acceleration. All right. So you can see the fact that we're we're built we're uh, assuming constant values for our kingpin axis parameters. We're assuming linearity, so it's no surprise that the the kingpin axis, or I'm sorry, the torque versus lateral acceleration uh, builds up uh, linearly. All right. Now, one of the things that say if you in, instead of in the calculations use a constant, say you had a lookup table of you know. Uh, road wheel angle is a function of, of steering wheel angle uh, and which included a nonlinearity then if you use that um, you could you could capture you know the, the, the build up in uh, in torque uh, as a function of that uh, change in the uh, the overall steer ratio with steering wheel angle okay all right so in summary um, we talked about the kingpin axis you know, being the, the three-dimensional elastokinematic 
axis about which the wheel rotates. We showed some, you know, different uh, uh, how to find the kingpin inclination or kingpin axis for different types of suspensions. Um, hopefully, you appreciate the, the importance of the, you know, the scrub radius kingpin off that kingpin inclination angle um, and how they are uh, parameters defined by the rear view location of, of the kingpin axis relative to the wheel center and contact patch. Um, caster, caster or mechanical trail, spindle trail, caster angle, you know, are, are, are important suspension parameters defined by the, the side view location of the kingpin axis uh, relative to the wheel center and, and contact patch. Um, we can calculate the total axle kingpin moment by superimposing these individual moments due to the, the forces and moments at the, uh, in the ground plane and at the wheel center. And and for a car without power steering, you know the torque is is can be at steering wheel torque can be estimated by simply dividing that that kingpin moment by the overall uh, steering ratio. Uh, again, for for a deeper dive into steering systems, you know there's like I said the, the three day, um, you know SAE seminar the fundamentals of steering systems. Um, I, I I just recently signed up for the industrial lecture program. And uh, so I'm I'm in the process of putting together, you know, a a, a longer uh, presentation um, on uh, you know entitled the FSA steering system from the road wheel to the steering wheel, which is going to go into more detail, um, ca talking about things you know uh, like uh, like Ackerman and the the like i said the steer arm geometry um the upper steering system non uniformity things like that so um but it's work it's work in progress so um you could check the uh you know uh link here on the SAE industrial lecture program there's a description of it um it's probably going to come later in in 2023 so if your teams are are, are working on your 2024 car um, and you're interested in steering systems, it's probably, uh, uh, it would definitely be available, you know, that would definitely be ready like third quarter, uh, you know, to, to, to help support some of the uh, uh, studies and, and whatever. So, um, yeah, that's, that's all I have. Okay, thanks, Tim. Um, there's, there's no uh, new questions in the chat, but there is one, I guess, comment or observation that uh, FSA electric cars, at least some of them, have all-wheel drive. So the, the acceleration forces at the front axle are applicable or at the front tires are applicable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah, you, like you the, showed the equations, but then didn't really expect to use them. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think, so. and then would they have re regenerative braking on the front axle as well, or? Probably so. Yeah, so that so that FX, uh, that longitudinal um, kingpin moment at the wheel center, you know, equation might, might, might come in handy. Yep. Yeah. So then, then one question I had, and, and I'm gonna assume that some of the people are thinking the same thing. Um, how much steering torque should we have? How do we know what's a good number or a bad number? Yeah, that that's a great question. Uh, that's, that's a great question. Um, at at the end of the day, it's is what is what does the driver feel comfortable? What what amount of torque gives the driver a sense of uh, of road feel? You know, a sense of you know gives them that that tactile feedback that that tells them the uh, the conditions, you know, of, of, of the road um, that allows them to place the car precisely on, on, on the path that, uh, that, 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 they, that they want to, right? And so at, at a minimum, it, it should be, you know, we, we should look at how much torque is required, how much what is the maximum amount of torque that the, the driver's willing to, to tolerate, right? And so I guess it, it, it gets into, you know, hey, it, at the end of the year, the end of the season, during your debrief, um, you know, if the drivers say, you know, the car was 
kind of hard to drive because the efforts were, you know, steering efforts were really high. Maybe a good thing to do would be to then go and figure out, okay, what were the steering efforts, right? Either if you, you have, you know, do some instrumented handling test or perhaps doing a, a first principles approximation like we, like we did here, kind of baseline where you're at and then your target for next year would be, okay, you know, we're going to try to be 20% less, 30% less or whatever. You know, we, we want a certain amount of torque feedback, but like, like I said, for, for controllability, you know, and, and, and like that, that whole modulation and precision um, perspective. But um, so, so we don't want too high efforts, but we don't want too low of efforts such that the, the steering feels vague and the driver doesn't really know where it's at, right? So I think uh, a, a good thing would be to, find out where you're at and then based on the, the feedback from the drivers consider making changes for next year yeah and, and one comment i'd point out too it, it really depends on your steering wheel diameter right because the the driver doesn't truly apply a torque to the steering wheel the driver yeah. pushes and pulls in an almost linear sense and then the the moment arm is the radius of the steering wheel right yeah, so I mean, you could easily replace, you know, rim rim force with you know with, with steering wheel torque, you know, which is a, a, you know another you bring up a good point. You know, maybe you're like, okay, you know, we're going to keep everything the same, but next year we're going to go to a a, a small. We had an issue with ingress egress, so we have to go to a smaller steering wheel. Well, if you go to a smaller steering wheel. Right? How is that? That's going to change the amount of effort, amount of force that the driver has to apply. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So we are about out of time. Uh, a couple more things. Again, this this uh, will be this recording of this today's presentation will wind up on the formula on the Detroit SAE section YouTube channel. I think uh, somebody put the link to that in the chat. Um, give give uh, give us a couple of weeks to get that edited and posted there. And then, uh, as the slide on the screen sh now shows, there's two more uh, presentations in this series coming up um, next Friday. I will give a presentation on uh, chassis and suspension development. Um, and then the following week in February. Um, I have another one on the very basics of shock absorber tuning or damper tuning. Uh, so please register for those at the SAE Detroit website. Um, and we look forward to seeing you then. Yeah. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, thank you. Thanks, Daryl. Thank you, Tim. Excellent job. <laughs>